always topical, never relevant. This is the Cardboard News Network. Hello and welcome to the Cardboard News Network, where the news is recyclable. I'm Luke Rollison. And I'm Chaz Redhead. The headlines tonight. An ice cathedral has become open in Switzerland for those who want to add that crucially missing element from their ski season, more ice. A study has found that patients are more likely to die in an operation if it's a surgeon's birthday, especially if they close their eyes and make a wish. Donald Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has been rushed to John Hopkins Medical Center for treatment of COVID-19. I'm sorry. I've just been informed he was rushed to John Hopkins Garden Centre. The Royal Shakespeare Company has received nearly £20 million in loans from the government. Hopefully this means they'll finally be able to afford some new plays. That's not how the RSC works, Luke. Oh, same ones. That's year not how the RSC year, works. Chaz. No. Year after year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamlet 2. I want a Hamlet 2, Chaz. You, that is a motion picture starring Steve Coogan and it was not very good. Really? And our final headline. Disney have announced a new Indiana Jones film starring Harrison Ford, in which the hero will use his trusty whip to flog the dead horse of the franchise. You can expect that in 2022. And those Very are the headlines. Those are the headlines. That, that's that. That was, that was, we got through that slick and quick. Yeah, until you drew attention to it. Well done, you and me, Chaz. Great work. Mm. Well, welcome everyone to the Cardboard News Network. Um, how are we all doing? Someone says in the chat, absolutely cracking, Rudy farts. So it's um, it's a it's a stellar and intelligent beginning to what will be an intelligent and I can say pretty confidently, Chaz, our most relevantest show we've ever had. Absolutely, because what this happened show... today, Luke? So what? What happened today? Um, I. God, I uh, I woke up at like ten. The Electoral College. Um, yes, is that? I thought that's tomorrow. That is tomorrow. Isn't that's it? right. But tomorrow. it is the eve of the Electoral College decision, which means that this episode is all about our unruly Everything. colonies from over the Atlantic. I'm of course, talking about the United States of America. States of the Americans. Um, Chaz, here's a little recap for any uh, students at the back who haven't done their homework because we actually began this program off the back of the American election, where we discovered all about what happened then. And this is what happened. Just to give everyone a little recap, uh, here's, here's Joe Biden. Can you see that, Chaz? Yep, I can see. Joe Biden. And Joe Biden, on the eve of the election, I believe last month, I believe last month, Chaz. Yes, would be yes the election was last month. I believe it was last month. And Joe Biden kicked it all off by saying, release the ocean and then that's when america which used to be a patchwork country of all different shapes sizes and colors became all absolutely democrats no that's not democrats. what happened and ever since then chaz everyone in america has agreed it is better to be blue than um uh um, you didn't think of an ending did you but it's good, isn't it, Chaz? That's what I reckon. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a whole episode all about that little country that I like to call America's. Um, but before that, Chaz, I believe you've got some charts for us. Is that I right? do. It's time for my data roundup of the week. Welcome, everybody. My name's Chaz Redhead. I am fully aware that my microphone stand is floating in space, abruptly cut off from whatever its anchor point is. And it's time to go over some charts. We all like charts. I love charts the most. Let me go through some of the charts that we're looking at this week. So, for example, uh, obviously Christmas is nearly upon us and a lot of people are doing some last minute shopping. I have a breakdown here of what uh, of, of the likelihood of your parcel being delivered based on the service that you use. As you can see, with a whopping 38 percent, the Royal Mail have the largest chunk of this. 31 percent, not far behind Amazon. Uh, 12% DPD, a little bit shaky. 11% parcel force, again, a little bit shaky. 6% is asking a random drunk to pick up your par parcel. Again, you're really flipping a coin or maybe flipping several. And at the lowest with 2% is Hermes, because fuck Hermes. Moving on, next chart. 
We've also seen in recent weeks a colossal uptick in sales of the Radio Times. I'm afraid I don't have the data for highlighter sales to compare to this, but I imagine we'd see a very similar picture. 23rd of November, and uh, week beginning 23rd of November and week beginning 30th of November, very stagnant. We see a minor uptick on December the 7th, but projected tomorrow, week beginning December the 14th, an enormous uptick in Radio Time sales coming back down to almost standard levels on the 23rd of December. So something to look forward to there for Radio Times fans. Now, here is a very simple pie chart. And this is about the kind of people that you expect to get booked on Newsnight. So one segment is people talking about people talking about cancel culture and how they've been silenced. And the other portion of the chart is actual transgender people talking about their life experiences. As you can see, the chart is skewed specifically in favor of one of those groups. I shouldn't have to spell it out for you. The charts very much speak for themselves. And then finally, it's just a quick chart roundup this time. We can see that the interest in Star Wars as a franchise has stagnated somewhat, but that hasn't stopped the uptick of new Star Wars programming continuing to shoot up even as the interest in Star Wars as a franchise has stayed neutral. Obviously, the Disney Investor Day stream was but a couple of days ago, and they announced a slew of new Star Wars projects, including spin-offs for Lando Calrissian and Obi-Wan Kenobi. But they're not the only characters who have been given spin-offs. We have some exclusive announcements that Disney have saved just for us. That's right, this is exclusive. Disney are doing a spin-off on everyone's favorite uh, everyone's favorite character, everyone's favorite robotic character, I should say, and they've tapped into the uniquely creative mind of Wes Anderson to Helmet. That's fantastic Mr. Gonk will be dropping in spring 2022. Now, people thought we need we like Gonk and we like the tiny cute creatures in Star Wars, but what if they could go through a real emotional journey where they learn something about themselves and find humility and beauty in the world? Well, you need look no further. The Porg Shank Redemption will be dropping in autumn of 2023. So a lot to look forward to there. And last but certainly not least... Famed filmmaker and documentarian Werner Herzog has been tapped by Disney to, to create his own spin on the Star Wars Holiday Special. And as another exclusive to the Cardboard News Network, here is the first look trailer for that project. Morning comes on the forest planet of Kashyyyk, where in their infinite arrogance, the Wookiees have placed themselves above the animals in the treetops. Here is the home of Chewbacca, his son Lumpy, and a senile furball. The boy Lumpy has been kept innocent, unaware of the horrors of the galactic civil war. He plays not realizing his precarious balance is like that of his own safety. To keep himself distracted from the horrors his father has seen, Lumpy has fallen into holographic entertainment. In the next room, his grandfather embraces holograph or no a copy hard light crux that can hope to offer some comfort now shattered soul. This all occurred in a galaxy far away a long time ago. We are witnessing living death masks. The final rattle of a civilization that has long since been consumed by the very stars they fought wars over. An endless procession of death and decay, signifying nothing at all. K 
Can you truly have a life day without death itself? You can expect to see that on Disney Plus in mid-2021. Look, uh, that, 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 was, um, that was really something, Chaz. Well, I do try. <laughs> what, what, what a Sclusi. What a Sclusi. Werner Herzog. Who would have thought it? Hmm. Um, German, is he? Is that, is, that, is that what he is? He is German. Oh, right, right. Can right, you tell yeah. from his clear German accent? I could tell that from that clear German accent. Um, Chaz, just before we get into the meat of the show, a little, I'd like to give a little shout out to LEBW, who's uh, really holding the fort on the chat there. LEBW, keep it up. Thanks very much for your good work. Um, Chaz, I think it's I think it's time really to to kick off with our our meaty, our relevant, and our topical material. Yes, excellent. We're talking about America. That's right. We're talking uh, we're talking uh, around America. We're talking around America. What? Um, we're talking we're talking about America in a way. Right. Because America is on the planet, chats. And this week, I have an expose that will take us. From the stars and beyond, Chaz. That's right. I'm delivering a two-part journalistic expose all about that most American of topics, aliens. This is a reach, even for you. And extraterrestrials. Are we ready? Yes. All right, here goes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. Aliens have been in the news this week. In fact, aliens have been in the news already year, if you know where to look. For example, there's been monoliths popping up all around the globe, beginning in Utah, the Isle of Wight, and then this most unusual monolith that appeared on top of Churchill's statue outside Parliament. Yes, that's right. Aliens really are the new um, things that show up a lot, like uh, celebrities. Aliens are the new celebrities. Aliens are like uh, celebrities. Aliens are, aliens are like celebrities this year, but before, aliens were a little more like aliens, Chaz, if you ask me. Oh, Whereas God. celebrities, I've seen less of because of lockdown. Is, does that make sense? No. I, that, that's the line I'd written. I, I thought that would really you know, get the people going. Why are no. you writing your own copy again? I've told you not to do that. But how do you know, Chaz, if you've met an alien? Well... If you don't remember, that might be because they were not memorable or boring. <laughs> but it's easy to know when you've been picked up by an alien because they always pick you up using pincers. And it means they leave some really distinctive alien marks on you. Um, picture number two. Yeah, picture Thomas? We are seeing yeah. the diagram. You'll see two red spots where the aliens leave their special alien markings. The okay. best way then to fight off the alien threat, Chaz, is by creating your own, like I have here, protective covers. That's tin foil right there. Try getting through that, alien pincers. Not a single chance. So why not have a little look at your own chest now? Have you met an alien? Right. Perhaps in your past? Okay. Now this is how you will know. Chaz, what have you got, mate? Are you, are you, are you smooth like a Barbie doll? Um, right. What I think has happened Luke, yes. is that you have confused nipples, which every yeah. human being has, yeah. with the telltale markings of alien abduction. And those covers that you have for your own 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 nipples, you saw the word pasties, which are, which are things that burlesque performers use. You saw that word written down, thought it was pasties, and now have got some weird tinfoil pie covering over your nipples. Chaz, I hear you. I wasn't listening, but I did hear you. Oh, for God's sake. And you said all human beings have nipples, Chaz. Yes. Chaz, Chaz, Chaz. I have a surprise for you. Try Googling humans not with nipples and you'll see a few more results than you might be expecting. I'm not going Chaz, to Google that, Luke. Listen to the truth, Chaz. You have met aliens in your past, and that's what's going on. I do want to give you some proof. Think I would it, I would love some I would love some journalism. How about this? One, why do flying saucers look like nipples? Two, why has Twitch banned nipples if not to hide the truth from us? 
And three, I have none other than an interview with a man who has been abducted by aliens himself. That's right. I'm not going to chat to Harold, a man with nipples. Hi, Harold. Uh, so, Harold, Harold, are you trying to remain anonymous, Harold? Is that, is that what's going on with your disguise? Oh, uh, yes, yes. I didn't want my uh, face to be known. Yeah. You, your disguise, Harold, is a picture of your face. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, but uh, this is a 2D version where my actual face is in 3D, so, you know. Right, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense, Harold, but but I think on a screen you'll be 2D anyway, so so you're basically exactly the same as if you weren't wearing it. Oh. So it's not, uh, you know what I say, it's not very effective as a, as a keeping yourself anonymous, Harold. You uh, could... Okay, um, let me, what about this? Yeah, all right, if you've got something else. I guess that is that is better. What? It's yeah, it's better. I get, you, you're kind of you kind of hiding yourself. I guess you're wearing. What about a, if I coupled it with this? No, now you're holding dog biscuits. You oh just yeah, like, but who's that man with dog biscuits? Oh, uh, well, Harold hasn't got a dog. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That okay, is yeah. technically advertising, which we can't uh, uh, allow. And I will inform viewers that other dog biscuits are available. What about this? Well, but Harold, that's not a very good disguise because you do own that object. So, so it's plausible that you would have it. What about this? <laughs> that's a puppet. That's a puppet. It doesn't just... Your hand isn't the... I'm talking about your face, Harold. It's your face that I'm worried that people will recognize. That's... Okay, what about this? Yeah, that'll do it. That'll well, do it. Well, I'm, I'm holding a hose. So now the people will think, oh, there's a man holding a hose. But, you know... You know what, Harold? I think let's just cut to the. We've got a reconstruction of your alien encounter. Is that right? Okay. Right, so let's, yeah. let's let's um, Harold, if you can try and whip up a better disguise, and let's uh, let's whip up um, that 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 reconstruction video, please, chat. It's a dramatic it's reconstruction. All started when I was in bed one day and I heard the eeriest sound. I didn't even want to open my eyes, but then I did, and I said, Alexa, turn off eerie sound alarm. And then I sighed in relief. Because all was well. Then I got dressed and made my way downstairs like any other day. <laughs> I remember walking over to the piano. But then, when I outstretched my hands, the most horrifying thing happened. sound was awful, but then I realised that these weren't a demon, but they were my hands. I sighed with relief, and all was well, but then I didn't know what it could be. Maybe the devil come to claim my soul. So against all of my fears, I answered the phone anyway. Hesitantly, I picked it up and said, uh, Hello? What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, 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 Ghostbusters 2. Goodbye. Luckily, it was just a survey. But then, I realized I hadn't taken the bins outside. Oi, dickhead, I'm full. Sorry. Wanker! <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Hmm. Hello? Hello, we aliens. Oh. And that's the story of how I was abducted. The end. So that, that, that's, that's what happened? Is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. That's when that, I got abducted. That's when you got abducted? Yeah. There, was a lot, there was a lot of build-up there, Harold. And yeah. not... not not so much of the abduction itself. No. They, they just came to the, you're telling us they just came to the door. Yeah. They came they came to the door and said, Hello, we're the aliens. I've got, I've got a, they someone rang the bell. They rang the bell. <laughs> they rang the bell. <laughs> wow, what are they what 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 happened Harold, what happened next? Well, um I remember being led into a big dark room and then uh, there was a white light. And then out of the white light I saw Tom Cruise's face and he was climbing a cliff and one of the aliens put a box in my lap 
we'd had a bit of food in, which <laughs> tasted a bit corny. And the alien was dressed as my sister. And, uh, oh no, hang on. That, that was my sister taking me to Mission Impossible 2. I don't remember what happened with the alien, sorry. <laughs> How, I have one more question for you. Do you know that in your reconstruction, you, it's you again? You've got no disguise on. No. You shouldn't be acting in your own reconstruction. That's not. A, that's not really a reconstruction, is it? No, that's my brother, uh, Harold. He looks exactly like you, Harold. Yeah, I was filming. <laughs> Well, thanks very much, Harold. Um, there was no questions in the audience for you, Harold, but Martin VJ did say classic Harold. Um, we'll check in with you later, Harold. Thanks very much for your um, very illuminating uh, conversation. Was well, it Chad, illuminating? I think that sums There was a light in it, and, you know, we know all about his life, and that, I think, is the kind of thing you can't just read in books, Chaz, you know? Um, I... I d- Look, I, I know, I know, you're, I know you're a bit disappointed because I came all the way to America to to meet, you know, Americans and find out what was going on. Yeah, politicians. And it, yeah. And it looks like I haven't delivered, but Chaz, that's because I've been keeping this a little surprise for you. I've got a VIP tour of the White House. Really? That's right. You and me are beginning to going on a little tour of the White House with an official interviewee for the post of White House Tour Guide. Uh, that's Mr. Christian Brighty. Um, so Christian, we, can, we, can we get onto our tour now? I'm very excited, Charles. Yes, I'm very excited as well. Let's see if we can- um, Oh, that's it. There we are, the White can, House. See if we can find ourselves on this tour. It's gleaming. Oh, it looks beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely it looks amazing. amazing. Wow, amazing. Oh, hey there. Hey there, boys. I'm on, I'm on my way. It's such a huge compound down here. Yeah, wow. It's uh is that Christian Brighty, famed tour guide yeah. from the White House? I'm uh a huge oh no, I, yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a brilliant yeah, I'm on my way. Sorry, it's such a huge huh. oh, 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 oh oh man! Wow, you're here! Luke, you made it all the way from the United England. Well done! How are you today, boy? Oh, I'm so excited to be seen around this White House I've heard so much about. Oh, it's what a, and how white. Isn't it just, isn't it just huge and white? It's like a Wonderful. big pair of teeth, Christian. What? It's like a big pair of teeth. Uh, yes, you do. All right, well, I'm going to take you round to the other side because, boy, oh boy, there's what do people want when they see a big white house to see what it's like on the other no, side. So I'm just going to... Oh, Chad, this is good, mate. You have to admit, this is exactly the kind of stuff that we, were, we should have on the show more. Oh, whoa, we look. And isn't it done? Doesn't it look nice from this side? Is that, what is that in the middle? Is that some kind of ghost? That is a fountain that is frozen. Uh, cool. Yep. But everything else, sh- sh- you know, well, it is still. winter. Exactly, good stuff. Well, are you boys wanting to come into the to the White House? Are you? Yes, you please. To- Can we? Oh, I would right. love to see the White House. This is all <laughs> exclusives. Absolutely, but first of all, yeah, all right, you're gonna have to follow me to security. I don't think we can call this exclusive, Chaz. I think people have been inside the White House before. Yeah, but not with the same uh, production value of the Muppet Treasure Island CD game. Yeah, good point. That is a world first. All right, boys, how are we doing? Are we well? Christian, who's so, that thin man? That thin that's blue me. man. Oh, the thin blue man. That's a uh, good old. I'm just gonna high high five. Yep. Nope. Miles off. <laughs> okay. Well, no good things. I just also wanted to show you. Not only am I dressed to be a wonderful American citizen, I got the White House on the tie. That's the Statue of Liberty. Yes. Good stuff. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is. Chaz, if I can ask you to just lean forward, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take whatever. I'm just gonna have to frisk you, my boy. I'm just gonna frisk you. I'm just mm-hmm. frisk you. What, 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 what do you call this? Oh, Chaz. Uh, okay, right. Chaz. Chaz. Chaz, that is not allowed. You cannot take a, a book with these words. With I like words fiction. Into the White House. Oh yeah. What's your favorite fiction? Uh, oh, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, the works of Tracy Letts. Uh, uh, Pretty high up on the list. Um, stop changing the subject, Chaz. All right. Yeah, stop changing the subject. I'm the security boy here. All right, well, <laughs> boy. You just, I'm going to have to put that in a, in a bin. 
Luke, let's see what we've got on you Ooh, here. We, here goes. Wow. Ooh, it tickles. All right. You've got, what's that? A, a mask? We don't believe in those here at the White House. You get that off, you boy. And oh. a copy of Wild Swans, a great book. You hold on to that. We're trying to be uh, very international. In our, all right, well, you, both, you both... What? Oh, Christian, there's a question from the audience. Martin VJ wants to know if the White House is a gift shop. Uh, absolutely. And on the way out, you can take whatever you want. Just take it. Just grab it. If you see anything you want, just nab it. And as we go around, point things out and I'll try and I'll, I'll try and grab them for you. All right. Let's head through. Let's head through to the uh, the next bit of the of the White House tour. All right. God, I've always Chad, wanted to see the how... next bit of the White House tour. I've never oh, seen yeah. a man go out of focus live. That's what that's what I'm finding really exciting. Yeah. Well, it's a special there's there's a real ability to you know it's a strange place but here we go now i'm rooting into Ooh. the different cctv cameras here so excuse me as it's a little bit hodgepodge as i as i run around no, but uh yeah. all right here. oh there we go excellent stuff now this is one of the famous white house corridors you'll have seen it in movies you'll now what do you think people do in a corridor well um judging by what you did use the standard trap door that comes equipped with all White House corridors. That's absolutely right. And so who's excited to go visit the first room of the White House? <gasps> Ooh, oh, this, this is a very this exciting is room. The White House. Yeah, we've got other rooms. All right, here we go. On our way to the first room of the, of, of the White House. That's trap surprising. Door in the corridor. That's exclusive. I never knew that. I don't understand why they wouldn't just use doors. Oh, God, it's because it's a secret basement office. This is... This that is, is right, my boy. That is the this is the situation room. And boy, oh boy, what a situation have I got for you here today. So any of these chairs are places where people can can sit in and think about how they might want to end the world. Uh, we recently replaced the uh, doomsday clock that was hanging up on the wall with a doomsday sand timer. It felt kind of more archaic, but also more uh, pessimistic. And we kind of liked that vibe. The inevitability of it really struck a struck a chord. Christian, um, what do those light switches do at the back? Ooh. What's that? Oh, oh no. Oh. You have to I excuse think... me. That might be one of the... Okay. Um, oh, dear. Let's just uh, cut away from from the White House. because I, Oh, I'm sorry, Chaz. Because I believe that... I believe that the Cardboard News Network might be haunted. I believe we have a ghost. Let's oh, cut to the ghost now. Not... That's a ghost, all right. Oh, hello. Go away. No. no I no. am the ghost of Christmas past. Oh. I'm looking for Donald Trump. Have you seen him? I've never well, heard of him. We were, Yes, he's. we have heard of him. We were just on a tour of the White House. Uh, uh, so so oh. we could find him. To, uh, sorry. This is an exclusive interview with a member of the undead. Um, can I ask? Yeah. Uh, can I ask Ghost of Christmas Past? How how did you die? Well, I was the season three winner of The Apprentice, but when I asked for my prize money, they locked me in a trunk and left me in Las Vegas. Right. That is when depressing. Do you want to see my presentation for Donald Trump? It's Not in... even slightly, Ghost. But I've got no in interest. I want to go to the gift shop Luke. as soon as possible. Luke. It's in the past. I'm going to show you anyway. The, oh, the, look. the winner of the third series of The Apprentice was Simon Am. Oh, no, it's about The American Apprentice or The English Apprentice. The American, American Apprentice. Apprentice. All right, I'll do another Google. Oh, what's this? It's... Donald Trump's hand. Look, it's baby Donald riding a bike. But where is his papa? Oh, look, it's Fred Trump counting money. Is he going to help Donald ride the bike? No. He kicked Donald off his bike and said it's a dog eat dog world. That looks like a hole that Donald will only be able to fill with the presidency of the United States. Do you think that Donald will understand the moral of the story? 
No, I I would I'll go back to the drawing board, Ghost. If I'm honest, I I had no idea what was going on. I've ne- that never happened to me. Ne- no, it, it didn't happen to you, but it happened what, to what's, what's the Donald. Plan? I didn't understand Donald that Trump. at all. Ghost, I think be... you're doing great work. Where is Thank Bob Cratchit? So and I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Get out I'm... of here. Okay, oh, don't go chew away go. the go- look, Luke. Bye, Luke. Bye, Ghost. Luke, Bye, you and I are going to have a talk. About, Jazz. about how to treat guests on this show. I, I, listen, that 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 ghost is no guest of mine, Chaz. I, I don't have their email, and I would not ask them to do it. I did not announce them being on this show on Twitter. I can tell you that much. That didn't happen. So if 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 you'll excuse me, Chaz, I'd like to continue with our lovely tour, if that's all right. Okay. Well, I'll leave you to get the feed working again. Yeah, yeah, oh Chaz. You just, you just, you just kick the feed back together, Chaz. That'd be great. I'll just, I'll just see if I can fix it. Yeah. Oh, Ellie, LEBW wants to ask some questions of Christian Blighty. Well, the, as soon uh, as we get, uh, as soon as we get the feed back to. This is why we should have ghosts on the show, Chaz. It just messes everything up. Oh, hello. Oh my God, that is the biggest cup I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God. Oh, you silly English piece of shit. That's not a cup. That's a bath. Oh. And, and and welcome to the White House bathroom. And I've got a choice of loo roll for you here. Would you like the constitutional history of England? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, this is like an antagonist thing. I would love to yeah. use that to wipe my bum bum. No, no, Luke, please. Well, I, well you know, I, I got it from the... It was, a, it, over, it was supposed Christy. to be a no. It was supposed to be a little joke for the. Pass it over, Chris. Oh, or, or do you want Al Gore's an inconvenient truth? I appreciate it. it's very shiny. There you go. But it is there, and it's the top of it's disappearing because it's not real, just like climate change. Christian, what, what do you want to what? What? LBW wants to know if you're actually American. Absolutely, darn yes. Where were you born? What? What? Where were you born in America? Nineteen eighty-three. That's oh, when. Cool. That's a yeah. Great, that's a cool. Next thing. room, I reckon. 1983 had a great sequel. I read it. It was it's, really good. It's not a sequel. The book was called 1984, and it doesn't have a sequel. Yeah, that's the right, no, sequel. The of this this here place over here. Now, who can guess what's this room? It's oh my god! Is it is it the library? Wrong! It's the widest room in the White House. And what do we have here? Oh, all of your favorites? I've got some delicious uh, moisturizer. Who needs creaming up? I can... Uh, we've also got a beautiful portrait of white Jesus. All the best white stuff you could want. It's the, it's the widest house in the world, so why not the widest room in the widest house with the widest boys? Who, who needs creaming up? Uh, you. Yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. What else would you expect to find here? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, right. Well, we'll move on to the mayo in a bit. We started off. What? My favorite thing about this is to, to break the reality of this for a moment. We know that that is a that Jesus painting is something that Christian must have in his house. Yeah, don't, I, I, no, oh. don't, don't, nope. It's also from the green screen. Now, moving on to the next room in the house. Out the window, please, Christian. I have so many, yeah. Come on, this is so many questions stuff. about that Jesus painting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, yeah, it's something. Oh, oh this yeah. is, the this office. is the creme de la creme, Luke. This is the Oval Office. Christian, I, think, I would I love think my face see. is the creme de la creme because it's burnt. <laughs> now, what do you think this room is for? Um, apples, apples, apples. Absolutely, there's some apples down he- down here. Eat an apple, Christian. Eat yes, an apple. I thought you would say that, and I will. Mmm, so good. I think he took a chunk out of that table leg. Mmm, so good. I tell you what, there's one thing that we can do in here that's a real treat. This is the phone that they use to call all of the famous people from history when they're doing their oh hello yes i am the new president which did you want to give it a go christian are you now the new president uh no they've just let me use the phone oh okay yeah i'd love to call i can call anyone from history absolutely can i can i call soren kierkegaard yes all right ring all right here comes Soren Kierkegaard. Jazz. I can't believe you chose Soren Kierkegaard. I was right. What can I say, man? I'm a Kierkegaard stan. Oh, where are we going? 
This is this is worrying. There's a hole in the White House. Chaz, there's a hole in the White House. Those maniacs at CERN did it. Oh, no. Hello? Hello, hello. is that Soren Kierkegaard? Yes. Oh, Soren, I'm a huge fan. Sorry, I don't... Great. I don't mm. usually get like this. Me? Me too? This is a... This is a real hey, thrill to talk to you. This is a real yes. thrill. Hey, well, sorry. Is, is Soren Kierkegaard? Yes. Is your refrigerator running? What? Uh, well, then you better go catch it. I don't under. I make the fruit loaf, right? All right. <laughs> it's time. That's the end of the line for me. Uh, get out of here, you silly old ghost. Wow, that's, Chad, that, that, he was boring. That that absolute classic Soren Kierkegaard quote, I make the fruit loaf, I think. <laughs> Which book was that from, Chaz? Oh, oh, one of them. And then the last the last room in the house is uh, obviously the haunted wishing well. But what? I doubt that we'll find any ghosts or anything as spooky and oh. such in this room. Dreamland um, is my land. No, it's a haunted oh. wishing well. Get out of here. Not more ghosts, Chaz. Oh no! Exactly what I asked. We shouldn't for. have summoned Not on that. the strength of a haunted wishing well. Now we're going to have ghosts on our hands. Ghosts up to our ears. Look, there it is. There's a ghost. Oh, oh no! Hey, Betsy, you startled me. I'm looking for Donald Trump. Have you seen him? I've not heard of him, and if I had, I would not tell you because you're not nice. No. Ah, Why are you being so mean to the ghost right off the bat? I'm the ghost of Christmas present. Show some respect, please. Okay, I'll take off my nipples. Thank you. Do you have something, some some moral tale you wish to tell Donald? Oh, no, wait, ghost, ghost questions. Think, Chaz, be a journalist. How did you die? Oh, thank you for asking. Well, I was at a Trump rally and then someone sneezed in my face. And now... I'm see-through. Can you imagine? Ooh. It's a little weird. That I have a, I, I have a present for Donald Trump that I spent all day making. Well, <laughs> we would love to see it, wouldn't we, Luke? Yeah, later, later. No, I don't know. No, no. now. I could never open my present for Donald Trump in front of you, even though I spent all day slaving on the stove. It's a chicken pot pie. It's my grandma's recipe. All right, get it out. But I guess if you insist, Luke, I'll 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 open it for you. But yeah, go on, get it. Get I can't it out. believe that you're making me open Donald Trump's present. That's oh, yeah, a bit I, rude, isn't it? It's completely mis It's meant to be the ghost of Christmas present is in the present moment. Ugh. But but th this isn't my chicken pot pie. This is what. What, these are mail-in ballots. Boo. No, boo. don't don't boo the ghost, Luke. Well, I never. It, it says they're voting for Joseph R. Biden. Can you imagine? I've never, it's fine. I've never heard of him. Sorry, carry on. He's he's the devil. That's all you need to know about him. And look, it's it signed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Why does that name sound familiar? He was. Am I meant? Am I meant to know this? He was a significant civil rights leader from this from the fifties and sixties. Well, there's there's so many ballots, and all of them say they're voting for Biden. My goodness, heaven to Betsy's! And look at this one. This one is signed by Hey Zeus. That sounds foreign to me, doesn't it, boys? Jesus H. Christ. Right. Well, I'm going to go find Donald Trump. Yes. Yeah, good luck, good mate. Luck. I'm sure we'll be happy to see you. Bye, ghost. Bye, boys. Bye. Bye, ghost. God, Gosh. that really took a turn. That that did. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you, Chaz. I'm relieved that ghosts famously only come in twos, and that we won't be seeing any more spooky ghosts. Not how ghosts on this work. Tour of the White House. They Not never come in work. twos, especially on Christmas. They only ever come in twos. Listen, Chaz. I know you were a bit disappointed by our tour. I wasn't, but I know you were. But yeah. I'm gonna cheer you up because we're gonna meet someone who actually does work at the White House and is very important. Oh.
Well, this yeah, is very exciting. Right. Should I just read the intro? Should I just read the copy? Yeah, why don't you just read the copy? That okay, I um, this is very exciting. Someone from inside the White House. This is another exclusive. Um, joining us now live from the White House is the Secretary of Stationery and or Milk Products, Donna Trump. Donna, uh, first of all, welcome to the Cardboard News Network. Hi. Oh, my God. Thank you so so much for having me. This is so weird. What show is this? Is this, this is, America's Next Top Model? It's uh, America's Next Top Model. Okay, fine. Sure. Now, yeah. um, how are how is the mood currently in the White House? How are spirits going into uh, Christmas in a lame duck term? Are there spirits in the White House? Oh my God. Like I knew it. Like as soon as I moved in here, I got this like totally creepy vibe. So I asked my uncle Donald about it. And he said that the only dead thing around here was liberalism. Like I don't fully understand what he meant by that, but I hid in my bathroom for five days anyway. So like, it's kind of scary. Right. Well, I would correct you on that, but considering I've met two ghosts today, I'll just leave it there and move on. Um, have have any uh, steps or thoughts been taken towards the transition of power? Um, Do you mean my transition from vegan to super vegan? Sure. Yeah, so like that's super exciting and I can't wait to do that because it's gonna make me an even better person. Um, oh, and now I'm realizing you mean the different one, like handing over the presidency to that weird old man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the thing about that is that we're not gonna do that um like they don't fully tell me everything around here but i did overhear donald on the phone to this cement mixing company mm -hmm. and like i'm pretty sure that he's gonna concrete his feet to the floor of the oval office so like that's kind of awkward uh that's treason but we'll stick a pin in that for now um do you moving on from that do you currently know Donald Trump's mood. What is his mood at this time? Oh my God, he's like so cranky right now. It's like super creepy. Like I don't fully know what his problem is. And like, I also don't care because he's the reason that I'm super rich. So I'm like, whatever. Um, having said that, when I did move to the White House, like for the first day of my job, I was like, thanks. We should probably try to be friends. Um, so I thought that I would try and do a nice thing for him like a gesture. Mm -hmm. So um, I went into his kitchen and I looked at his food and I was like, oh my God, it's all super unhealthy. Do you know that he invented a pre-breakfast snack called a pizza -rito? A pizza burrito hybrid? Right, so it's like a burrito, but instead of filling it with like beans and rice, you fill it with Big Macs. And instead of wrapping it up with a tortilla, you wrap it up with five pizzas. I was like, oh my God, you are going to die like any second. So I was like, right, threw out his junk food, replaced it with water. And he was not happy. Like I've never met him face to face, but I did get a note under my door. Um, I have it here. Do you want me to read what it said? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love that. This is another exclusive right here. Right. So it says, dear Donna, welcome to the White House. I hope you will be very happy here. If you ever go into my kitchen again, I will rip your stupid head off with my bare hands and make it look like an accident. Love ya, DT. Well, it sounds exactly like him. Right? Hmm. Love you. That's nice. Yeah. That is nice. Really, That's warm. That's from the president. Really class yeah. with the silver lining. We are running out of time, so I want to get a couple more questions out. Um, when we look back on this particular election season, what do you think cost Donald Trump the election? I think that's like a super difficult question to answer because it's like totally nuanced and there are so many possible reasons. Um, but I think the main reason might be that he's a crazy psychopath who can't tie his own shoes and doesn't fully understand what toast is. I was like, duh, toast is just bread. It's been on vacation. <laughs> right, right. Good. Uh, what do you think the legacy of the Trump administration will be? Um, I don't know, like maybe like hats. Like I feel like pre 2016, it was like not okay to wear a hat. Like if I'd gone on a first date with a guy and he showed up in a hat, I would be like, oh my God, I'm leaving. And I also would have had him fired from like whatever sad little job he did. But I feel like post Trump, 
hats are kind of fine again. Like they're not good, but they're fine. Like for instance, if you were to put on a hat right now, I wouldn't judge you a whole bunch for it. But like if you'd put on a hat pre-Trump administration, I would have instantly assumed that you were like a serial killer or poor. Right. So you wouldn't judge me a whole bunch, but you'd still judge me a little bit? Oh, yeah. Like I'm still a human being, but like it's kind of more fine than it was before. All right. All right. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I blanked out for a second thinking about all of the hats I own. Yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from your time working at the White House? So like, it's been a super confusing time and between you and me, I don't fully understand why I'm here. Um, although I did see a memo from my dad to Donald Trump that I don't think I was supposed to read, but I made a copy of anyway. In fact, I have it here. Do you want me to read it? Yes, please. Absolutely. Dear Donald, Please can you give Donna a job at the White House because she's an embarrassment to our family and needs to be kept away somewhere quiet. Any old job will do, but FYI, she is so fucking dumb, so keep it simple. Thanks, Donald. Oh, you won. P.S. Don't worry about that tape of you and Vladimir at the couple's retreat in Barbados. I've had it destroyed and the small child who witnessed you kissing has also been killed. Wow. Crazy times. Yeah. Um... I have a lot of fluff questions to ask after that massive revelation. Uh, um, uh, so every year the White House... Oh, sorry, no, you go ahead. Every year the White House pardons a turkey for Thanksgiving. Um, are you involved in that? And did your favorite turkey get spared? Oh my God. So they told me I had to be there for the pardoning ceremony this year. And I was like, oh, boring, but like, whatever, because I'm like super into animal rights and noise. So these guys showed up and they gave my uncle this turkey. And like, I don't want to be mean or anything, but like, it was fully the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Like, it was like a vagina with feathers coming out of it. And like, I just found it super offensive to look at. And I'm not kidding you. When it came out onto the platform, it looked at me and I could tell that it was like judging me because my boobs are not real. So I snuck down into the yard that night and shot it in the face anyway. Right, good, okay. Uh, what a what an enlightening chat that we've had with each other. I wish I could talk to you longer, but we are running very uh, far behind time-wise. So I just have a question less about the state of US politics and more about Donna Trump, the human being. Um, what are your plans for the future? What will you do? Uh, okay. So I'm super excited about this and I'm so glad you asked me. So I've come up with an idea for a brand new app, okay? Basically, it's an online roulette wheel that generates business ideas for hot idiots. So you scan your face with your phone camera, and then if it thinks you're hot, you get the following message. You are hot. Oh my God, thanks. And then it gives you a business idea. So like maybe it's dog wedding party planner or like human divorce party planner or like airline pilot. All very viable career paths for you. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm sure the only way is up for Donna Trump. And, yeah. and just a little addendum. You're not worried about the fact... I've seen two ghosts hanging around the White House. Are you worried that there might be another ghost in the White House? Yeah, like that's kind of creepy. In between you and me, I like have never done any work here ever. So I'm probably just going to leave. That's <laughs> probably for the best. Donna, thank you so much for coming on the show. And... I believe there is a sinister oh. figure who appeared in my mirror who now wishes to be put onto the broadcast. We cut to them now. D don't let him on, Chaz. I mean, oh, it's another ghost, isn't it? Ooh! Say it. It's Carol it's Singers. It's Carol Pat. Singers. He's... Okay, you read it. Donald, with any luck, next year... You can kill... 300,000 more Americans together? Mm. But for now, let me say, to me, you are perfect. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Love death. No, love death. Love death. The ghost, the ghost of the Christmas, of Christmas future. future. Um, uh, thank you. 
thank thank you so much um bye ghost of christmas future bye ghost. that was bye ghost incredibly disconcerting i can't believe they got you to say that stuff on air chaz i that know is that's, that's that is, that is where's that my is journalistic bad. integrity that is gonna go straight into my next highlight spheres also love listening to donna trump and i'm with her what a legacy look at this Make hats nice again. That's what uh, Martin VJ had to say on the chat. Let's make hats fine again. That was it. Let's make hats fine again. And I'm with them. Okay. All right, Chaz. Look, um, I, I I know what you're thinking. Luke's right. done a wonderful job with nope. the lineup. This Not week. even close. And, yeah, hold, yeah, but we're going to get closer. Um, I have found out there's a lot of touchy subjects going on in america at the moment Chaz. i'm not going to say any but i bet you can think of a few right yes for example um systemic racism yes uh financial inequality yes uh the pandemic that is now killing as many uh, uh, americans per day as 9-11 Y yes, and the most touchiest of all subjects, I believe, Hello. is touch itself. No. And that is what our next expert is going to be telling us all about. Okay. Let's hand over to Michael Julings. I, I will hand over to Michael Julings in just a moment. And you promised me that this is an expert, yes? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to ruin the surprise, Chad. I don't want to ruin it for you. You don't want to ruin the surprise of whether the expert is an expert. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Happy Christmas. All right. Well, I hand over to our expert, Michael Julings. Michael? Hello, and welcome to Touching Scenes, the segment that asks the questions, what have we touched this week? How many is that? And what did it feel like? I'm M. Julings, and my hands are softer than a mushroom sauce, but with the reassuring stillness of a tarn, featuring an island in the middle small enough to sail around. This week's record of the week is the Grateful Dead album, Working Man's Dead, from 1970. The soundtrack to my third year. I don't know why, but my mother just stopped playing it when I turned four. Let's get into it. We concern ourselves mainly with haptic visuality. What is this? Well, I'll tell you what it isn't. It isn't shocking or startling, so don't worry about that. You're safe with me. It isn't about you, so just leave the WhatsApp group. It isn't time I got a watch. The time is five to seven, so I know that, you know that. Just grow up. Haptic visuality. What is it? A perception experiment, a chance to think and learn, a touch sense experienced through audiovisual means. The touch sense can be achieved just through watching and hearing, and it can, be, it can bring about a deeper understanding than what our eyes and ears initially tell our brain. Basically, your other senses are damn liars. Your skin is the only one you can trust, but we really have to concentrate. This week, we're focusing on the worst topic of all, the Brexit negotiations. We're going to analyze how the talks are going based on what the key players have been touching this week as they flail around like giant babies, pushing beads around a toy in a doctor's waiting room, knowing full well that the upcoming diagnosis is a chronically debilitating and throttling disease. I know what you're thinking. The this sounds like the kind of wishy-washy nonsense Ed Miliband would claim he was into. And you'd be right. I, I talked to Ed yesterday and he actually believes we're heading for a point in the future where we can't rely on our senses at all. I'm worried that my roof is going to leak in five years' time, so let's bulldoze the house now. What I think is this, which is that we are willing to accept no sense at all. So, so there's a negotiation to be had on that. It's a, it's a fair point, Ed. Uh, good luck with the house. That sounds like a big job that might take six to 14 weeks at least. So to business, I'm going to look at uh, two objects involved in the negotiations. We're going to help you experience how they will touch the feelings of those that touch them and explore what those feelings mean to us. 
hopefully bringing a deep and holistic understanding to a process we can all agree we know fuck all about. Joining me now in the studio is the tea bag Ed Miliband was holding there. Let's just give it a feel for around 20 seconds. Just uh, watch it being touched. If you immediately find that fascinating or exuberant, or it delivers the kind of luxury experience defined as a haptic epiphany, then please be quiet. This is not an interactive demonstration. This tea bag is from Yorkshire. It, it grew and grew and grew there until it was dug up out the ground and put to work in a firm. Then it got a promotion and now it's a bag. When I touch this tea bag, I want you to think of where it came from. I want you to feel its rugged but fragile muslin with me. Can you sense its history? Think about the last time you had a tea. Did you touch the tea bag? And crucially, does Ed Miliband think that bringing this small bag onto the Andrew Marr show will make him culturally relevant again? The second piece of evidence we're going to look at is this Boris Johnson photograph. If you take a closer look, he's chosen to take it with him into the negotiations. He's, to he's chosen to take with him into the negotiations this piece of dried orange. We talked to him on Wednesday about why this might be. Well, I've just talked to uh, Ursula von der Leyen, and uh, as far as I can see, there is a clarity and a simplicity in the haircut. Okay, thanks, Boris. Now, let's touch the orange peel together. If you have your own orange peel at home, please, again, don't reach for it, as this is an experiment for you to appreciate how this feels through only audiovisual means. Boris will have fondled this piece while looking into Ursula's eyes. Maybe it was the scent of Christmas that made him finally wake up and realise that he'd be desperately alone this 25th of December, and maybe reminded him to stock up on Robinson's fruit squash from Sainsbury's local on the way back through St Pancras. That's it. If this has touched you in any way, then please get in touch on email. The address is in this mayonnaise. Goodbye for a whole week. And remember, your eyes are liars, your ears can't be trusted, and the only sense that truly informs your brain is your beautiful skin. Michael Dueling's there. Um, I, would, I would call that um, very informative, Chaz. I wouldn't. Well, it's all about how you listen, isn't it, I think? And I've been listening with an open mind and more importantly, big open hands. So I could, I could really feel what he was saying, even if I didn't necessarily hear it. I'm quite angry at you. I, ch I, ch I don't know what you want from me. What, what do you want? Me to take a vaccine live on air? Yes, that would be great, actually. It's funny you say that, Chaz, because whilst over here in America, I thought I'd do just that. I signed up for a, um, a, little, a little vaccine test, and I thought live on air. Can you see my entire body, by the way? Can you see me? I can see your, 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 your tie down to yeah. sort of underneath where you put the jam tart casings. Great, great, lovely. Um, so I just thought, Chance, you know, to make it up for you, I'll, I'll give you what you've always wanted, which is um, a live vaccination before any of the other news channels. That's, that, 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 you know, that, 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 that's what you've been talking to me all that's week That's what I've been about. talking to you. We were the last news network to call the US election, and we will be the first to have a live vaccination. All right. So um, this is exclusive, this? people. Yeah, yeah. You're obsessed with exclusives, aren't you, Chaz? You I love exclusive. It's the lifeblood of journalism. I like saying what other people are saying, Chaz, but that's just how we're different. Anyway, here goes. Cheers. They serve them in little espresso cups here. Interesting. Yeah, little espresso cup. Here we go. This is the uh, American vaccine. Just going to give that a try. Mmm. 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 Yeah, I'm getting um mellow chestnut, you know. Did you spit it back out again? Yeah, yeah, for the next person. Um, cause you, you just want to taste it. You just want to taste it, Chaz. You want you want you want to drink it down. You want to try all the other different vaccines they might have. You know, um, you, you, otherwise you get drunk on them. I think I don't know. I've I've watched them. Oh, oh, I feel quite weird though, Chaz. If I'm honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, I feel a bit weird, Chaz. What? Oh, oh. 
Oh, Luke, are you okay? Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my god, an alien has burst out of Luke's chest! Oh my god! Who? Is there anybody nearby who could perform big alien surgery on this tiny boy? Hi, the name's Mitch Mussel. I'm here from the Federal Bureau of Big Alien Surgery on this tiny boy. Can I be of assistance? Yes, I need you to do surgery on my, my co-host. Luke, he is he, an alien, burst out of his chest, and he might die, so we need to get that alien out and see if we can save Luke, and it'll be a whole thing. Calm down, sir. Lucky for you, I'm already wearing a plastic surgery glove. The other one is free, in case I need to do anything else with it. What? But oh, with this one, yeah. I can save your friend. All right, okay. please, please save my friend. Uh, the time is of the essence. Oh, the God. hands are going in now. Oh, one second. Ugh. Okay, the hands are coming out now. I believe that, uh... Okay, quick! Give me a please, Mr. Man! What's that, son? Please do this! Save surgery. my friend! Okay, the hands are going back in. What's your name, son? Uh, my name's Luke Rollison. Um, that's at Luke Rollison, and my agent is Camilla Cole at Curtis Brown. I swear to God, if you say your agent's email address one more time... It's a lot of information, Luke. Okay, I'm just surveying the... And then I'm just using my phone for two seconds. Okay, we've got the heartbeat monitor up. It's going steady at the moment. Okay, You're going to be all right, steady. son. That's, Don't that's, worry. That's good. Don't worry. Okay, so first I need to get my to-do list. Let me just oh see Oh, my God. There. No, there's no time um, for this. Let's have a look here. Uh, just to tell you, Luke, you're going to be fine, son, Okay. You are oh, gonna survive you. this, no problem. Let me just finish. Oh, yeah. Why are you writing call mom? We begin with surgery. Hey, mom, come on, baby, and restart. Huh? Come on, okay. There's only Luke, one thing I you need to guarantee do. Guarantee you, you're gonna survive Luke. this, okay? You're gonna survive. Thanks, Kit. Oh, I feel much better. But right, really let me like... just have a quick sniff of the pen. Pull that out. Okay, I'm ready to perform surgery. The hands are going back in. Just put the lid on there. Now, I'm just going to gently put my hand onto the... Grab all the blood, and I'm going to undress you first because I like to see what I'm dealing with. Ooh, oh, no that's... nipples, as you'll notice. No there's, nipples. There's no nipples there. That's strange. There's a... You've got very smooth skin. I like that. I will pull the blood out now. You've got very papery blood. Are you ever eating enough iron, Luke? Oh, not, not, not lately, I have to admit it. You can wrap a present with your blood, son. I don't know what's going on here. Now I've got just use a stapler and I need to... I'm sorry, is that an office open stapler? You up with this. It's, it's official surgery protocol to open people up with staplers nowadays. Well, open people up rather than close them up. No, we open them up first and then uh, I'll use scissors and then uh, well, we have a look around and then uh, if we feel like it, we'll close them up. But we have to make sure that the protocol is filled with these scissors. If I could just... The easiest oh, way that to is, go in that's is just stabbing. Stab. That's just stab. stabbing. Yeah, but the way that we do it is to make new holes because then that way we can circumvent the wound and we cut it wider. Circumvent so the wound? We circumvent the wound, and it, this is a piece of cake. So I just need to... You've just combined the new wound with quickly. the old wound to make a I mega need... wound. No, the... Uh, just drawing on a friend here. Why are you drawing on your hand? No, no, it's all part of it. Don't worry, he's going to he's gonna boost me up. Do you think I can do this? Yes, of course you can. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's going to be fine. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, why don't you use your uh, use a hammer to open him up a bit more? I can't use a hammer, son. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna grab whatever is closest, and we're gonna delve our way in. Oh, that that does not sound medical. Okay, I've got a pair of pliers. Those are not pliers. Here, Those are up. kitchen tongs. Oh, okay, there's the rib cage. You've just pulled his entire skin, muscles, yes, we need nerve structure that. off his that torso. That's what the staple is for. We'll put that back later. And then we pull back a rib and we pull out firstly what's in here. It's an organ. And oh, no. Okay. It's a balloon dog. That's fine. That's actually what the pancreas looks like. So that's that's no problem. I'm there. sorry. That the looks pancreas looks like a balloon normal. dog. Yes. To the naked eye. Correct. If you clothed it, then it wouldn't. And what I need to do is make an incision into the pancreas. I don't know. It looks sensitive. Scissors. 
And yeah, that's good. So I need to just cut a bit out of here, make him look. Yep, that's fine. And uh, now it's a bit thinner and manageable. Then <laughs> what I can do is maybe use that as some sort of sausage casing later. I'm just delving in a bit more, see what I can get. Uh, giblets. Okay, we don't need the giblets. Everyone knows that. So we can uh, we can oh, just shove them straight back do. in. You don't need them. It's like an appendix. That's fine. But you just shove the giblets back in. Yeah, straight back in. They'll sit in there nicely and baste for a little while. And we've also got here a sea shanty festival, sea fever in Hull. Uh, and that was in 1996, the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, oh. Luke, where were you, son, in uh, 1996 in September? Well, I, I was at the Sea Shanty Festival. That's where I was at. Did you happen to uh, eat any paper that day? Paper? That would explain the blood as well. You didn't chew, son. You need to chew. Okay, what's next? We've got a five. That's a number, a number five. five. Yeah, my five a day. Got it. That's, I had that earlier for breakfast. Oh, my God. That's good. That's not the way it works, Luke, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. Okay, let's see the to-do list. Just make sure we've opened him up. I'm sorry, Maybe his ribcage is still exposed. And then do a smiley face on that. I no feel worries. at this point you're deliberately dragging your feet and on this. We need to... Actually, I'm going to pull my hands out for two seconds because I just need to... I don't know if you know this about me, Luke, but I'm very into magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I want you to think of a number. Don't think do a, a magic trick in the middle of surgery. Luke, have you got a number between one and ten? Don't tell me what it is. Have you got it? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I thought of it, yeah. Fantastic. I'm going to jot this down on this bit of paper, and then I'm going to fold it up and then put it back through. And then what I'm going to do is just insert that into the rib cage, and then into Don't insert the anything into the rib cage. Don't put a foreign body in the rib cage. Right you have no idea what you're doing. And who's that in the background? You just let somebody wander around while you're doing surgery? No, she's the nurse. In fact, nurse, can you dab my brow? I need someone to dab my brow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, I really think this. we should get this alien out of me soon. That's a good idea, Luke. Okay, we, enough with the nonsense stuff. Let's get these, use these chopsticks Those are to chopsticks. get an alien No, out chopsticks there. aren't a medical tool. Okay. Got to be careful here and just put it out right here. Get the intestines out the way. And then we've got, there's the alien. There's the little son of a bitch. Oh, there he is. Quickly, stamp on him. No, no, no. The only way you deal with aliens, Chaz, I don't know if you know this, is you have to negotiate with them. And the only thing that speaks alien is a dinosaur. So I'm just going to put this forward and he can speak to the alien. Uh, what's your plans with the, the human? Yeah, just uh, live here for a bit, uh, you know, um, just uh, make a new show. Uh, yeah, you know. that's fair enough. Do you fancy going to Hull next year in September? I heard they've got like a sea shanty festival on. Yeah, I'd love to. Sounds great, yeah. Okay, yeah. brilliant. All right, see you then. All right, bye. See you then, bye. See you. Okay, phew, we defused the alien. Good work, dinosaur thing. You defused the alien? You gotta defuse the alien, gotta cut the right wire and make sure that you get them to a sea shanty hospital. Now we need to restart his heart because yes, we please stopped please restart it. his heart. Oh yeah, I would love a restarted heart please, Kit. <laughs> okay, we're gonna restart your heart, son, don't worry. The good news is it's my birthday today, okay? So, birthday? You're, yes, you're gonna be fine. I'm just gonna reach in here with hands. There's no point using tools anymore. We haven't got time. Oh. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take down all the we got a thumb. Have you eaten a yeah. thumb? I was sucking my thumb earlier, and I just, I just ate the whole thing. Okay, that's, uh, that's quite odd, Luke. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take everything out of the rib cage, break down all the supporting walls, and then we can rebuild from the start. Okay? You're describing an open plan kitchen living room. Yes, but it's gonna look great. There's the heart. Okay, we need to save the heart. We're gonna pump this up. So first of all, I'm just gonna squeeze and squeeze. And squeeze. Now we have to be careful, with it, Chaz, because if we squeeze, if you squeeze too, too much, much, yes. So obviously things could go wrong. But the thing is about me, it's my birthday. I can judge these things just by sleight of hand, so I can feel the sensitivity on the heart. Sleight Luke? of hand is a magic term. 
You're going to be fine, son. We've defused the alien. I'm using my slider hand to save you right now. You're going to be all right, son. You're going to be all right. Okay. We've got it at maximum pressure right now. So I'm going to use this fog to stab it. We burst the heart. Good. Okay. Did you just stab him in the heart? Yes, I realized halfway through it was a bad heart. We didn't need that anymore. This is going to be much better for him. Um, it's like Captain Planet. Everyone's got a ring. We can make it better. Let's have a look at the He's heart. He's flatlining. Okay, he's flat and that's good. That's like the base. So now we're at a foundation. We're at a base level of dead. And now we're going to build on top of that. That's a fine. base level of dead. No, that's fine. Okay, what I need to do is replace his heart. And what I'm going to replace his heart with? A banana. That is radical. That, no, don't, don't compliment him, Luke. Okay. You're I've currently un- dead. <laughs> I've unpeeled the banana. I'm going to put it into... The body. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, the I, I banana need, need to be slipped unpeeled. back in its peel. Pull this back. No. And maybe if I take the entire peel off. Okay. Now I'm going to reach in. Okay. Slap that in. Yes, it's yeah. a pair. Good. It changes into a pair once it enters into the bloodstream. So I can shove that inside. Let me use all my skills to... There we go. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's see the heart rate, because I don't believe this is legit. Well, one second. I've just got to try and get my heart beat working. Look, the nurse has lost all interest. Oh, oh, it's spilling blood all over me. Oh, 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 God. Oh, it's all to my... Oh, it's How is the nurse so calm during oh. all of this? Hey, Frankie. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you're doing really well. Oh, look, I'm better. That's good news. Look at that. Kit, thanks so much. That's a relief. Oh, it's my worked. God. It's oh, my God. Worked. Okay, well, I guess, thank you, surgeon. I guess I underestimated you, and thank you for saving my work acquaintance. Luke, good how are you feeling, big guy? Oh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing great, mate. I'm, I'm put straight back together. That was a thrill. Okay, well, we just have, we, we have just enough time to briefly check in on our hamster correspondent, Toto, who I believe was outside the White House, trying to get an exclusive interview with the president, Donald Trump. Let's see how it went. There he is outside. Yep. Oh no, it seems like, it seems like, yep, Toto has just been abducted by aliens. Yep, that's our- Already aliens. Our sympathies to Toto's family, uh, his wife, and his 27 children. Um, We will be giving you updates on the search for Toto as it unravels. Anyway. I think I should say something very quickly about my alien experience. It's very important to note that just because I had the vaccine right before it burst out of my stomach doesn't necessarily mean that it caused it, Chaz. You know, this is actually something that comes up a lot with vaccines. Correlation doesn't equal causation. It was probably the fact that I got abducted by aliens earlier in the day. That's very true. That's very true. So don't use this as an excuse to not take the vaccine. How about you take the fucking vaccine? Yeah, I should have said that earlier. But that's the moral of the whole episode, boys and girls. Always good to have a moral. Night, night. Anyway, we'll be back. I'm going to give you the credit. We'll be back next week for our final episode before the Christmas break. a big thanks to all of our guests, our correspondents, Michael Julings, Shari Monroy, Alice Marshall, Kit Sullivan, and Christian Brighty. All wonderful people. It was a pleasure to have pleasure to have you all on. And a little bit of housekeeping. My deepest apologies to the novel coronavirus. We ran out of time. I'm sorry we had to bump you. We will try to get you on next week before the Christmas break. But until then, on behalf of all of the CNN team, myself, Toto, Georgia House, and Luke Rollison. This has been the Cardboard News Network, and we'll see you next week. Good night, everyone. Roll credits. We got music? The music is playing. Okay, great. Great work, guys. That was awesome. Great stuff. Wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Fun. A lot of laughs.
We we did have audio up until five seconds ago. Wave, wave goodbye. 